Hello guys, my name is John Henry and I'm the creator of the channel Gospel of Christ. And welcome to our first chat. I don't have a real name for this yet. I was kind of thinking about calling it a podcast, but this is kind of like a video, so I guess we'll figure it out as we go, right? My goal in this video is to talk about two things, Bible versions and why it's important to know which ones are the best versions to use. I'm going to make this as practical as possible. So let's get right to it. As I was reading 1 Peter this week, I came across this verse which is a bit challenging when it comes to uh, its interpretation. It's 1 Peter 2 verse 8, and it reads as follows. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, for they stumble because they are disobedient to the word. And to this doom they were also appointed. This is from the NASB version, which is the New American Standard Bible version. A proper understanding of that verse depends on many factors. Being under the guidance of the Holy Spirit is assumed here, because without the help of the Holy Spirit, one cannot and will not properly interpret the Word of God. So I found out, depending on the Bible version you're using, you may end up with different interpretations, and some of the interpretations are completely outrageous. This may come to you as a shock, but don't be surprised at how so many texts of Scripture read so differently from one version to another. Hence, this can yield to different meanings and different interpretations, not intended by the author if the reader is not careful. That same verse now, from the NKJV version, the New King James Version Bible, reads as follows. Listen carefully. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, they stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. As you could see here in this version, it's missing the words to this doom. And the meaning is almost completely reversed. Now, let's take a look at the ESV, the English Standard Version, which reads as follows. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, they stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. Let's consider this ESV version to make a practical point here. So based on that version, it seems as though Peter is telling us that they were destined, they were appointed to disobey, which is very problematic because the first question that comes to mind is how can you judge someone, how can you judge someone for something they were destined to do? Let me rephrase this. How can you blame someone for rejecting the gospel when they were destined to do so no matter what? So this is one of the major issues that the ESV version raises as written in that verse. And without a good commentary, without a good Bible commentary, you won't get to the proper meaning of the verse by reading it from that version. And we can make the same argument from the New King James Version. I know the KJV Bible is popular among a lot of you on this channel, so I'm not throwing anybody under the bus here. However, when you read that same verse in the NASB version, the New American Standard Bible version, which is on the screen right now, the meaning of that verse is entirely different from what we just read from the ESV. We can clearly understand that they were not destined, the they we're talking about is the they in the verse, they were not destined or appointed to disobey, rather they were appointed to to doom. Now, granted, the words to this doom, or the word doom itself, is not in the original. That's the reason why in most Bible that have, in most Bibles, Bible versions, I, sh I should say, that have that word, it will be italicized. It will be in italics, which means it was not in the original version. It was added to make the text clearer as to what it means. So, they were appointed to doom. They were appointed to condemnation because of their disobedience. Now, let me unpack this for you guys. What did they disobey? They disobeyed the word. They rejected Christ. 
The stumbling rock or the rock of offense is none other than Christ here in that text, in this context. Because verses 6 and 7 in 1 Peter 2 read, Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. Verse 7, this precious value then is for you who believe, but for those who disbelieve, the stone which the builders rejected, this became the very cornerstone. This is a quote from Isaiah 28 verse 16. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a costly cornerstone for the foundation firmly placed. He who believes in it will not be disturbed. Where do we see that stone again? We see it in Psalm 118 verse 22. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. That stone is from God, and that stone is Christ. And there are two things that happen to that stone in relation to us. We either believe in the stone, meaning Christ, or we reject it. We either believe in him, believe in Christ, or we reject Christ. Here, there's no neutrality. There's a choice to be made. Salvation is divinely appointed to those who believe in Christ, just as judgment is divinely appointed to those who reject him. Aside from this explanation, I can add this note from the John MacArthur Study Bible, which sheds a lot more light on the interpretation of that verse. Pastor MacArthur's commentary says, and I quote, To every human being, Christ is either the means of salvation, if they believe, or the means of judgment, if they reject the gospel. He is like a stone in the wood that causes a traveler to fall. Close quote. Furthermore, John MacArthur in his commentary does something brilliant. He breaks the verse apart to help draw out its proper meaning. There are two parts. Part number one, disobedient to the word. Unbelief, he explains, is their disobedience, since the call of the gospel to repent and believe is a command from God. Number two, they were also appointed. In that portion, he explains, these, referring to the they in the verse, were not appointed by God to disobedience and unbelief. Rather, these, which is the they in the verse again, were appointed to doom because of their disobedience and unbelief. Judgment on unbelief is as divinely appointed as salvation by faith. So there you have it. It took me a little theological gymnastics to get there, but it's all worth it. Sometimes it's not only the Bible versions we use that make us miss the proper meaning. It's also by making a pretense out of a verse. How do we do that? We just take the verse out of context to make it mean something entirely different. Remember this quote of Dustin Binge I posted in our community section? Here Dustin clarifies Philippians 4.13, which we know is almost always misinterpreted. When you're struggling with a verse, all you have to do is read the prior verses in the chapter, or the whole chapter, if need be, the whole book, in order to build a contextual understanding of what is being said by the author, to get to the authorial intent. It's also important to find out in what context the book was written. For instance, the book of Philippians is among what we call the prison epistles of Paul. That means Paul was in prison when he wrote that epistle. He was not living his best life at the time. In fact, Paul says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 13, So it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. All in all, guys, I think it's very important we're familiar with the different Bible versions we're using for daily studies, devotional studies, and blogging, and article writing, and podcast. It's very important that, that we know what they are and which are the best ones to use for, for our understanding of the Bible, of the Word of God. Don't worry that you don't know enough yet. What's important is for you to be diligent in your study of the Word of God. A golden rule I learned early on is you use scripture to interpret scripture, and scripture can never be pitted against scripture, which means one scripture explains 
another scripture there's always a coherence there's always a better a clearer explanation from one passage to another passage but never a contradiction so just before i end this video i would like to address something that someone said someone told me that i destroyed and i quote my own calvinism in a post i made earlier in our community section on this very subject i replied I don't own Calvinism, but I own Bibles, and by God's grace, I am under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So I was not entirely sure what the person who made the comment was hinting at exactly, but I'd simply tell the person to take a look at verse 9 in 1 Peter chapter 2, which reads, But you, believers in Christ, as opposed to the rejectors, the ones that are appointed to doom, we are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim, so that we may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. As a commentary, I can tell you that those whom he called, he foreknew. He also predestined, and these whom he predestined, he also called. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 30. And those whom, these whom he called, he also justified and also glorified. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Let me know what Bible versions you use to study the Word of God. I find it useful to have multiple versions along with multiple commentaries and online resources to help me in my study of Scripture. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thank you for supporting us on Patreon. And if you'd like to support us on Patreon, we'll have a link in the description of this video. With love in Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ.